I'm Candy Underwood, and I am the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent here at the Cumberland County Cooperative Extension Service. And today, I'm going to go, with, go over with you how to make homemade apple jelly. Um, if you have never canned before, this is a simple recipe to get started, to kind of get used to canning. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the equipment that you're going to need. From the start, it may seem like a lot, but once you get going, you'll see it's very simple. Um, and with water bath canning, is a very simple process as opposed to pressure canning. And what you can put in the water bath canner is your jams, your jellies, pickles, any types of fruit can go in the water bath canner. But you cannot use your water bath canner for any types of vegetables or meats. And some tomatoes have to be in the pressure canner and some do not. So I would recommend that you read your recipe and I recommend that you look for research-based recipes. Be very careful when just um, Googling on the internet because a lot of recipes that you find are not research-based. And if you were looking for a recipe, just tag on the end Cooperative Extension. And you may find a local extension office, you may find one in Maine, but you know, it's going to be research based, so you know it's going to be a safe recipe for you to prepare. Now before we get started canning, I want to go over a little bit of the canning equipment that you may need. Um, the first thing is your water bath canner. Now many of you are probably familiar with these. Um, this is a water bath canner that most of us have. It has a rack in the bottom, but you can also use, if you have a large stock pot, um, you can use it as long as you have some type of um, little grate on the bottom, a little rack on the bottom so the water can get up under your jars. But today what I'm going to use is a electric water bath canner and I, I, I love it to death. Um, so right now I have my jars in here, my canning jars, and you want to use canning jars. Now this is what you typically use for your jelly. Uh, to put in. These are uh, ball jars, but there's different types of canning jars that you use. And you want to use a two-piece lid that comes with them. Now this little pack of jars, there was 12 pack that I, that I purchased and they all came with the lids. And I have gone ahead, I've washed all my jars in soapy, hot soapy water, as well as my rings, I've washed those. And then I'm waiting to put these in some boiling water right before I get ready to can because if I put it in there too soon, they will start to rust that quickly. So I just have these on standby to go into my pot. So my jars are all in my water bath canner. Um, I have the water over the top of the jars. Uh, when we start the process, we want to be sure we have at least an inch of water over the top of our jars. But with this canner, um, right now it's just keeping my jars warm and you want to do that because we're going to be putting a hot, a really hot product in the jar. So we want to be sure our jars are hot. Uh, if they were cold, we could actually break the jar putting a hot product into a cold jar. So they're simmering, waiting for me to put my hot jelly in it. And when we get to the process of actually canning, I'll show you how this will work as opposed to this one. Okay, some other equipment you're going to need. This is a jar lifter. Um, lots of times people use this incorrectly. They want to use this side to bring out their jars, but th we're going to use the rubber side. So when we take these uh, in and out of the jar or the canner, that's how we're going to use this. So this is a jar lifter. This is something that you would need um, with the canning process. Now this little tool can actually be used to get air bubbles out. So once we put the jelly in our jar, we're going to just go around the edges of our jar. And you want to use something plastic or wood. You don't want to use anything metal because it can actually scrape the jar and uh, make the jar weak. So we'll go around the edges. And then this side 
is where we measure our head space. And I'll go over that when we get to it, but we're going to use a fourth of an inch of head space. With jams and jellies, it's usually a fourth of an inch. And your recipe will tell you your head space, so don't panic about that. Each thing is different. Um, tomatoes, everything is different based on what that food product is. But your recipe should tell you how much head space to use. So when we get to that time, I'll just put this in there and the bottom of this little tool is going to touch my jam or my jelly. So we'll just use it like that, but I'll show you that when we get to it. Um, this little tool is a little magnet, so when I go and put my lids in that hot water, I can't reach in there because it's going to burn my fingers. So this is a little magnet, so it just helps to pick it up out of the pot and then I can lay it right on the jar and put my, ring, my little ring on there and tighten it when the time comes. So that's a little nifty tool to have too. And you can buy a lot of this stuff that's uh, in a kit. Um, I know this will be in a kit sometimes and your little wand, um, I mean your magnet and your jar lifter. Another thing you're going to need is a funnel. Um, so when we start adding our jelly to this jar, this is going to help help keep the edge or the rim of our jar clean. Um, if not, we're going to wipe it. Every time we will put a product in a jar, we're going to wipe the edge because we want to be sure that this little rubber seal here sticks to that jar. That's how it's going to actually get sealed. Uh, you can reuse these and you can reuse your jars, but you cannot reuse these. You have to purchase new ones with these. And you don't have to have one of these. Um, you can use any kind of uh, utensil, large utensil um, to uh, pour your jelly in, but I actually found this in an apartment store in the canning section and it has a little hook on it so I can just hook it on the side of the pot but I can get a good amount of product in this little ladle here and pour it into my jar. So that's basically <clears throat> the equipment you're going to use for your canning. Um, now for this recipe you want to buy a juice. You can use grape juice if you wanted to to make grape jelly. Uh, but apple jelly is really good. Um, I actually made this with a group of kids over in Linden Oats. We made some jelly last year and this this jelly was they loved it. Um, so this is going to be apple jelly, 100% juice, no added sugar because you're going to see we're going to add lots of sugar to our jelly. Um, we're going to add a few drops of red food coloring. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it will give it just a little bit of color. And then we have a box of pectin, fruit pectin. You can buy this at you know any store, grocery store. They usually have this, especially this time of year. Um, then we have five cups of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. Um, do not tweak your recipe. You have to follow this recipe according to what it says. It has to have that amount of sugar in order for it to gel. So you can't decrease the sugar in any way. Uh, if you want sh jellies or jams with less sugar, look for those recipes. Uh, if no sugar, look for those recipes. I know they have some pectins that are reduced for um, sugar so you can look for those but also just a reminder look for those recipes that call for less sugar and we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of butter and the reason being is um, it'll start getting a little foamy and this is going to cut down on that foam and once our jelly is ready I'll bring it over here and I'm going to show you just how to scoop a little bit of that foam out of your jelly before you pour it in your jars. Before we move over to the stove, um, I just wanted to go over measuring your sugar. Uh, I went ahead and measured my five. I didn't want to be distracted. 
I wanted to be sure I had my five because you, you know, you've got to have the exact amount, but I just wanted to show you when you're measuring your sugar, it has to be leveled off. You can see we have a heap here. This would be too much sugar if you were to put it, you know, into your jam or jelly, but you, you may know this, but you just want to get a flat edge kitchen utensil and just scrape it off and you want a level top for your sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my ingredients and I'm going to go over to the stove and we'll go over adding and going through that process. Before we actually start making our jelly, I wanted to go over a few things that I have over here on my stove. Um, I have a pot of water here going. This is going to be for my little uh, lids to go into right before we get ready to can. Uh, this will be boiling water. And then I have some other water over here just staying hot just in case the water in my pressure canner has lowered down a little bit. Uh, again, we have to have at least an inch of water above our jars before we start canning. So that's what that's for, just in case I need it. Um, I want it hot because that water is hot in the pot. So I'm just going to turn this a little higher so this will start boiling while I'm making um, my jelly. So you can see I have a pretty nice deep pot. This is um, an eight quart pot. Uh, they recommend six to eight quarts because it's going to start bubbling. It's going to get hot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this burner on high because we have got to bring our apple juice. This is four cups of apple juice. I'm going to add a little bit of food color, maybe just one or two drops. And then I'm going to add my pectin. And I'm going to add my butter. This is a half a teaspoon of butter. Now there's different types of pectins too. Um, there's powdered pectins and there are liquid pectins. Now this one called for a box, so I knew it was going to be a dried pectin. But if your recipe calls for a liquid pectin, then you need to purchase a liquid pectin. So we're going to bring this to a rolling boil. And if you aren't familiar with what a rolling boil is, that means when I'm stirring this liquid, as I stir, it's going to continue to boil. You're going to see the bubbles. You want to have everything pre-measured. You don't want to be standing over here measuring five cups of sugar. You want to have that already pre-measured um, so you're ready to go. Our butters starting to melt now. Smells so good. So I'm going to add our five cups of sugar. We got a rolling boil. Now we're going to stir this sugar in and we're going to bring it back to a rolling boil. And this is really hot. Um, this is something, if you have little ones around your house, you probably want them to be in another room because this would be really hot and can burn them. So once this gets back to a rolling boil, I'm going to time it for one minute and it's a good idea to have a timer because that one minute is very crucial in the gel process. So I have a little timer right here when it gets to that point, that rolling boil. Then I'll time it 
and then once that minute is up I'll take it off the heat and I'll start filling my jars now this recipe says it makes about six half pint jars um, so we're going to see how many we get today now over at my station where I'm going to be canning I've already got my hot plates and all that set up um, that way when I take this pot I don't have to worry about that everything is ready for me when I get over there and you want to be sure that's the same thing at home have everything thought out okay we're getting there okay so for one minute My burner off and I'm going to take my pot off the stove I'm going to bring it right over here where I'm going to start filling my jars you can see we've got a little bit of foam and we're just going to get as much as we can And you may not be able to get every little bit out, but if you were going to enter this into, say, the county fair, uh, you would probably want to get as much of that foam out as you can since it's going to be judged um, and you want your, your jar to look pretty for the judges. Now we're going to start filling our jars. I have my little lids here. I'm going to take a jar out of the um, water bath canner one at a time. So I'm going to start at the middle. And we're just going to empty the water out of our jar. And I have a towel here I'm going to work on. Be sure you have something, you know, under your jar since it's a hot jar. So I'm going to start filling it. Now this is where we we're starting to get to the head space that I told you about. Now for jams and jellies it's a, a fourth of an inch. I think I need just a little bit more. So let me try that. Let me test it and see. Here's my little tool. Remember I showed you this? And if I put this little section right here on the edge of the jar and it's not quite at a fourth so I need to add a little bit more and if you always add too much you can just take it out with a little spoon so that has it that looks good and I'm just gonna take my little tooling just go around the edges if there's any kind of little air bubbles we can get rid of those and then I've got a wet little paper towel here stamp and you may have to change it and I'm just going to wipe the edge of my jar because we want this to be clean before we put our lid on And 
we tighten these, we don't want to tight, tighten them really tight. We just want it fingertip tight so when it starts to grasp pretty good, um, that's when you know you've got it fingertip tight. So I'm going to lift this back up, straight up, straight in. I don't want it to tilt. I want it to go straight up and straight in because that could mess up my seal. And then I'll get out another jar. And we go through the same process till I have all of them filled. They also have little jar mitts um, that you can stick your hands in like that. Um, the jar is really hot and these jars are hot. This is our last jar. Now, if you were using a regular water bath canner, you would put the lid on it and um, turn your temperature up um, to get a rolling boil. And when it starts doing that boil, that's when you're going to start timing the process. And this recipe has to be processed for five minutes. Now with this electric water bath canner, I have to put this little diffuser down on top of the jars. And I put the top on it. And on this, I will turn it to canning. So I had it on like between medium and high on this electric canner. So now that they're ready, I've turned it all the way to canning. So when this starts boiling, a rapid boil, that's when I'm going to start timing it for five minutes. Okay, my canner is boiling now, so this is when I need to start processing it for five minutes. So I'm going to turn my timer on for five minutes, and then when that's done, we'll be able to take our jars out of the pot. Our timer just went off, so our five minutes of processing is up. And with this pot, I just turn it off. Uh, with your regular pot, if you have a regular water bath canner, just turn your stove off. And then we're just going to take the lid off of our canner, and we're just going to let it cool down for like five minutes. And then you can start lifting your jars out of your regular canner. Now with this one, I'll have to take all the water out of it, then take my diffuser off the top, then take my jars out. So we're going to wait about five minutes before we start taking our jars out. Okay, our five minutes is up. So with this pot, I'm going to have to drain all the water out, take the diffuser off the top, and then I can set my jars on my um, dish towel. But with your regular canner, just go ahead and start pulling your jars out. Now if I was at home, I would have this set up at my sink. So the only thing I'd have to do is just open it up and let it drain into the sink. That's one thing nifty about this pot. It can be used for multiple things, not just canning. That little ping is a good sound because we know that one of the jars is sealed. Okay, I think we've got most of the water drained out of our pot, so I'm going to take my diffuser off. And now I'm ready to actually take out each jar of jelly. And I'm going to start in the middle kind of balance my jelly jars. So I'm going to take them straight up and over. And don't worry about any liquid on the top. Don't try to get it off. Just leave everything just as it is. And you want to space them out so they can get some air around each jar.
Now as these cool, you'll probably hear a little ping, a little pop of the, the jar lid, which is a good thing. As I mentioned before, it's telling you that it's pulling down and it's making a, a seal. Now what we're going to do next is these jars are going to sit here for 12 hours. We're not going to touch them. We're not going to do anything to them. And then I'll come back and I'm going to check them. And what I'm going to check them for is I have an empty jar here. On this lid, there's a little like little belly button here, a little dot here. And if I was to come in here and push this down and hear that, then I know, okay, this jar did not seal. So this jar is going to have to go in the refrigerator. Don't put it on the shelf. But if it doesn't do this and it stays down, then I know that it is sealed and it's okay for me to put it on my shelf in my pantry. Uh, you don't have to leave the screw bands on if you don't want to. Um, I like to, especially uh, if I use something over and over again. That way I know it's got a, it's got a tight seal on it. Reseal it back up. Um, but if you had like, maybe you can some apples, whole apples, apple slices, um, and you eat that jar in one setting, then you know you don't have to keep these rings on your um, product that you're storing in your pantry. So that's pretty much how you make um, apple jelly. Uh, this process is called water bath canning. And again, when you water bath can, um, you can water bath can jams, jellies, pickles, any kind of fruits. Uh, this is a good way to start canning if you've never canned before, just to kind of get familiar with it. Uh, if you have any questions on canning, feel free to call me. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. My direct number is 910-321-6869. So hopefully um, you'll try to make this jelly and start canning.